Hi everyone, hope you are having a great day so far. Hi everyone, hope you're having a great day. I hope you all had a fabulous, uh, I almost said Memorial Day, fabulous Labor Day weekend. Um, it was busy, it was fun, I got a lot done. Uh, my sister came into town, and so it was me, my mom, my sister. We worked at the store all weekend, got everything ready to go for the opening next weekend. Um, and so I'm gra so grateful for their help because <clears throat> I could have done it without it. My mom's husband, he was a big help too. He did a whole bunch of stuff for me. And so we all we did was work, eat, eat and eat again okay josh made a fabulous brisket we ate that for two days um, we had chinese food one night um and we just drank wine hung out had a great time even though we were working we got home um and it was great so i hope you all spent a fabulous time with your family whether you went to the lake i know it's like end of summer or whether you were on vacation or whether you stayed at home and watched movies and it was raining in your area it came a bad thunderstorm at my house last night did you get rain mm -mm. Oh, yeah, it was like for a good two hours it was flooding and thundering, and it never thunders. Um, so I love that. But anyway, we've just been working, honey, getting everything ready to go. The fourth quarter is here, basically. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for Christmas time. I'm excited for cool weather. I'm excited for fall and Halloween. Um, and I can't wait. So today we're going to do bow tying. <clears throat> you know, here's why I wanted to do bow tying again it's because holidays are coming up in the fourth quarter, and there's so many different things that you can use ribbon for and by putting ribbon on something and embellishing it with that it completely makes it different and, tra and transforms it and it's easy and simple and um, the best thing is that ribbon is pretty inexpensive depending on which kind you buy and it's all on sale and you can get all kinds of ribbon at ellisummongarden.com and in store they have all kinds of ribbon and if you go through and look at the vignettes that they set up the purpose of those is to show you um, how you can display either the products that they have for sale whether it's ribbon or tabletop decor in your actual home. So it gives you inspiration and ideas um, to inspire you to go home and do it at your own home. So hopefully this video helps you. Of all the videos I've ever done, whether it's here or whether it's on my personal page, Designs by Dylan, the ones that I get um, notes from or messages about or comments about, um, it's always bow tying just because um, it's something that people want to learn how to do. They're intimidated by it, but I'm going to show you some easy, different techniques that you can use to create fabulous bows. And I'm going to talk to you about ribbon selection, color selection, and how you can put all those things together to get the perfect bow. Okay? So sit back, honey, relax, get yourself a cup of coffee or a drink. Okay? Nobody's saying. Uh, but I have a question for all of y'all, and <clears throat> y'all tell me because I need a little help. Okay? Listen, Linda, I got new insurance. I have a doctor's appointment today at one, at two, two o'clock. It's been like 10 days ago that I got the insurance and they told me within 10 business days you're going to get your insurance card in the mail. So, guess what? I have a thing I'm signed up for from USPS so I can see what's in my mailbox every day. And it's in the mailbox today, but my mail doesn't run at my house till 5 o'clock and my appointment's at 2. You think if I call the insurance company, they'll send me an email when I can print out? Y'all think that? I hope so because I'm going to the doctor regardless. They'll have to bill me or something. But if anyone's experienced insurance, if there's any insurance agents out there working from Blue Cross Blue Shield, leave a comment. Let me know because when I get off, when I get done with this video, I've got to call the insurance company and see if they can send me an emailed um, insurance card because I gotta have it. Because girl, daddy needs some sleeping pills. Okay, so I've got to get to the doctor today at two o'clock and get some labs done. I just want to get everything checked out. You know, my back's been killing, so I gotta get an MRI eventually and make sure everything's good. So, okay, enough of me rambling, honey. Let's see. Oh, Regina said they'll be able to fax it to the doctor. Even better. Okay, y'all. We're going to start off with <clears throat> the most simple bow you can make. I'm just going to teach you the techniques. Oh, Regina. Um, yes, I'm going to give you a one ribbon bow. And this one is really just about techniques, okay? Let me make sure I have some wire cutter. I mean, not wire cutters. Um, pipe cleaners. Oh, here's some wire. Okay, <clears throat> so when you guys get ready to do bow tying, make sure you have some good wire or pipe cleaner. I prefer wire, but you know, you could use what's best for you. Sharp scissors, which I probably don't have right here, but we're going to make do. <clears throat> and then any ribbon that you purchase for any season needs to be wired edge ribbon. If you don't have wired edge ribbon, there's no structure to it. It's going to fall. It's going to flap. It's going to flop. 
honey, all the things, okay? You don't want it to do that. So we're gonna start out, this one is a one and a half inch Christmas ribbon and it's got a wired edge on it. And I'm just gonna do a simple one ribbon bow to begin with and then we'll advance from there. But I just wanna show you the techniques. So I wanna start with a pole and if you've never tied a bow before, leave a comment that says yes or no. And if you do have questions about bow tying that you've experienced and you've got stuck, leave those down below and Dina's gonna refer those to me and I'll answer those questions as we do this little tutorial, okay? Okay, <clears throat> so here's what we're gonna do. Most of the time, if you're lucky, ribbon has 10 yards on it. That's gonna give you two five yard bows if you just do a single ribbon bow, okay? This one has 10 yards, I think. No, it has five. So first thing you do guys when you get ready to tie a bow is you need to determine how long your tail is going to be, okay? And that's the first thing you do. So most of the time you could do a good 12 inch tail or six inch tail and that's going to be perfect for most projects. Now if you're doing this for a Christmas tree, you could leave it longer. So I'm going to leave a tail, okay? Then you're going to take this ribbon and hold it over your hands like this and you're going to bunch it together, okay? Now, if you're left-handed or right-handed, do the same technique. just depends on what hand that you're in, okay? Now, we're going to make our first loop. Now, remember, guys, the bigger the loop, the bigger your bow is going to turn out. So, honey, if you do a loop this big, you better put this on top of a car, okay? If you're going to do it a little bit smaller, this is what you put on a wreath or a Christmas package or a tree, okay? So, I'm going to make a loop. That one's about 12 inches or so. Now, the next part is the only tricky part of bow tying. So once you get the next part down, you are good to go. So, any questions so far? How does she get rid of closed captioning? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> swipe, <laughs> swipe your comments away, either left or right on your screen, and that should take care of that problem, I think. And your volume is probably not up, and that's why you've got closed captions on. Okay, so now we're going to pinch and twist. Doesn't that sound like a dance move? So now that we have our loop, you're gonna take your ribbon. You're going to pinch it together, which I have, and twist. And what that does is it puts your ribbon back on the correct side, okay? So now you're gonna come underneath here and make your next loop. Now, you can pull these up like this to make sure they're the same length, okay? You're gonna twist again make your next loop and guys you're going to do that on the entire bow okay and that's all there is to it and before you get into doing multiple ribbons and things I would start out with just a single ribbon and practice 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 until you're comfortable with it and then from there it's pretty easy to move on to stack and mix ribbon bows okay so I'm gonna just keep going until I run out of ribbon. And if I had to guess, these loops are about 10 inches, the loop size. And don't forget guys that we sell a Probo the hand. So say you have arthritis or you're not, your hands aren't very strong, that is okay because it happens to all of us. And especially if you're in a business where you tie multiple bows a day for a project or a season or a customer, then you can get a probo of the hand on the website and that will do all the work for you that your hands would do. All the loops are pretty much the same size. All the loops are the exact same size. Okay? And that's what it'll look like when you're done. Never let go of the center of this bow because if so, all your ribbon's gonna fall apart, okay? So now I'm gonna grab a piece of wire. Okay? And the wire, find the center of it. It's gonna go in the dead center of this bow where your finger is. And you're gonna tie this off as tight as you can to hold everything in place, just like you were tying off, you know, a loaf of bread or something on the end. Okay, and once you get it tied, <clears throat> you're good to go. So grasp the center of your bow, okay? And then you're gonna alternate your loops. Regina says hello. Hey, Regina. Um, we're going to alternate our loops.
Guys, Regina is just saying hello. She is the creator of Probo the Hand, the one I was just telling you all about. And you can get that at ellishomeandgarden.com. And again, it is a bow maker. It's a board, and it's going to basically work as your fingers and as your hands. So it's going to take all the stress and the pressure off of your hands if you're doing multi-ribbon bows. And you can do them on there. And the best part about it is they're always accurate and precise and symmetric each and every time. Um, they're always the same. All right, guys. So that is a single loop bow. Okay. Do I have any questions? Y'all leave a comment down below and make sure you ask those questions throughout each process of this video. So that way, if you do have those questions, we can answer those before we move on to our next bow. Okay. Honey, I got to get me a doctor. My eye is uh, twitching today. Probably because um, of the insurance thing. <laughs> okay. I've been stressed out about that. And then, y'all, once you have your bow done, you have this pipe cleaner or wire in this case, and that's what you use to attach it to whatever it is that you want to attach it to. Okay? So let's set her to the side, and girl, let's move on to something a little bit more complicated, okay? So, for our next project, we're going to do a couple stacked bows. Now, don't let these freak you out, okay? All you're doing is using multiple ribbons, but you're using the same technique, okay? I'm going to show you a couple different options or uh, ways that I time, okay? But first, let's catch up, okay? Because I haven't talked to y'all in a minute, and I've been watching some movies. You have Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all have got to get on Netflix and watch The Devil in Ohio. Have you seen about it? Mm -mm. It's about a satanic cult. So good. I love anything to do with the cult, okay? I don't want to be in one. I don't want to be by one, but I want to hear about one. And it was really, really good. So we watched The Devil in Ohio this weekend. It's eight episodes on Netflix. We watched um, this movie called Us. It was a scary movie. It was so good. And we watched House of Dragons. Is anybody watching that? The Game of Thrones prequel or whatever. And that might be it. That might be it. Oh, and we watched House of Hammer. Have you seen the previews for that? You know what Army Hammer is? Mm-hmm. You know, well, he's like a cannibal. Yeah. Okay, so House of Hammer, guys, Army Hammer's an actor. <clears throat> and all the stuff came out about him, like, liking all this crazy stuff where he ties people up and, you know, he eats, uh, I mean, he wants to be a cannibal. It was crazy. It ruined his career. And so, anyway, it dates back to, like, his great-great-grandfather, and every single person, every generation has had something like this. And it's nuts. And so, one of his family members is on there telling this whole story. And she's afraid she's going to die because she's putting out all these secrets because his great-grandfather was a billionaire, like, oil tycoon guy and very powerful and popular and had all these people in his pocket. Uh, but it was very good. It's on Discovery Plus. It's called House of Hammer. So if y'all love a documentary like I do, especially some weird ones, check it out because my mouth was on the floor the whole time. Did you get Josh Walsh Officer and a Gentleman? No, y'all. I haven't watched Officer and a Gentleman yet, but he said he would. So we just haven't had time because I was working all weekend and... The only reason we started Devil in Ohio is because my mom and sister were over, and I was trying to think what is something that I could put on that they would like, and we could like watch watch together, and so we all liked it. But uh, I can't have people over at my house when I'm watching that. I got to be focused and you know in the zone, which will be tonight because um, Josh is tired. So when he's tired like that, y'all use that to my advantage and like do what I want. So I'm like, oh well, if you get tired, take a nap, and so I'll I watch it. So yeah, hopefully tonight. That was a true story, right? On what? House of Hammer? Yeah. Yeah, it is a true story. It's still it's still ongoing. Um, Regina was asking. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay. So let's move on to our first stacked bow. Okay? Now, listen, girl. They have got some... I mean, they always have pretty ribbon. But they've got some killer ribbon this year. Isn't that pretty? Oh, look at the back. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm a huge fan of velvet ribbon. Um, I have several trees at my store that all have velvet ribbon, and they have them at Ellis, too. And I put I put royal blue navy ribbon. That didn't make any sense. Royal blue velvet ribbon on my fall stuff. Okay. Let's talk about ribbon selection and colors. you got to figure out what your theme is, okay? So um, if you're doing a candy theme, then you go and coordinate ribbon to go with that candy theme, whether it be snowmen, you know, snowflakes, Santas, whimsical, 
Um, but one thing I would keep in mind, guys, you can have as many patterns as you want. I mean, there's no wrong or right way to tie or to put ribbon together. It's all about having fun and being creative and using your your flair that you have for bow tie. But if you do multiple patterns, at least put one solid in there. And all that's going to do is help calm down all that pattern, okay? And, and keep it to where it's not so busy and you have a little bit of flow throughout your bow. In this case, these are easy because these are all solid. But I was wanting to do a traditional bow. So you've got red, green, gold. That's my definition of traditional. That's not everybody's. That's okay. Okay? So I guess you could call this more of like a classic Christmas. Okay? So I chose these three ribbons. Okay? And I'm going to tell you why. I've got the red one down here. Um, that is a red velvet one and a half inch ribbon. I've got a fabulous green in the center and then I've got a not velvet but almost like a leathery type material gold on the end now look at this I chose this gold because this ribbon is double-sided so you've got two colors okay and that gives you a little bit of gold in there also aren't those pretty so we're gonna use all three of these to go on our bow okay while I get started on this I want to know how's the fall decorating going. Leave a comment. Let us know if you've got your front porch done at least. Girl, you better. Guess what? I don't have anything. I have, have a spring wreath up, and I have an Easter bunny on my coffee table. But we're not talking about me, okay? As soon as this weekend's over with, I'll be able to breathe a little bit, and then I'll get that done. Gina said she made a howling bow, 13 different ribbons. Great way to use up scraps. Wow, that is a great way. And guys, if you go to YouTube and type in <coughs> Terry Bow Demonstration, um, there's some on there with Regina, and I'm sure there's some on there with Terry Lynn Marshall. But they talk yeah. about how you can have like little scraps of ribbon, and you can make fabulous, stunning bows for your project. So don't ever throw away, you know, a yard or half a yard of ribbon if it's left on your roll, because you can use it for something, even if it's just for a tail. Okay, are y'all ready? Here we go. And also, this is velvet. The back side is what do you call that? Shiny, but uh, metallic. That's what it kind of looks yeah. like. Okay, we're gonna do this first part the same way we did a minute ago, okay? I want all my tails on this bow to be the exact same, okay? So they're all gonna be six inches. So I'm gonna find my tail and pinch it together, and then I'm going to make my first loop. You're gonna pinch and twist, like I said, each and every time that you have a new piece of ribbon. And we're gonna do four loops of this red okay so what we've done so far is the same exact way we did the other bow once you get these four loops take your in quotations sharp scissors okay and cut off this other tail okay so it looks just like this you have four loops and you have two tails Okay, now I'm going to go with my green. So never let go of the red that's in your hand. Okay, let me get this ready to go. Now you're going to take your green. Guys, look how simple. You go underneath your red and you do this the same way. You just continue or you pick up where you left off. Okay? And I'm going to do two loops of the green. And if you want the bow to be thicker, guys, you could do it that way as well. Okay? So this is what you have now. And then we're going to finish off with our gold. And underneath with the gold. And we'll put a loop on each side. Okay. I'm going to sign like a pair of similar. That's going to be better. Okay, we're going to sign. 
Okay, so now take your wire or your pipe cleaner. You're going to tie this off the same way we did the other one. I prefer using a little bit of a thicker wire, guys, because it's easier to hold on to. If you get really thin wire, it's a pain. And one wire that I hate is that kind that's coiled up together. Oh, Lord. Yes, those are 100 times better. Okay, let me make sure this is all tied together. Okay. So you see, guys, we haven't fluffed this out, but you've got all those ribbons. You have four loops of red, two loops of green, two loops of gold, which makes this a four, six, eight loop bow. But you also have all those tails in there that are going to resemble your loops, okay? You can replicate this on the Pro Bow. For about this size, I'd probably do row D or E. On your on your bow maker. Okay, I'm going to just alternate my tails and my loops, and be patient with yourself. Okay. Because you want to make sure you make your bow pretty, y'all. <clears throat> so just take a second. And when I do Christmas tree bows, this is the type of bow that I put on the Christmas tree. So see here, now you have a mixed bow with all of those ribbons. And I did the loops pretty large, these are probably 12 to 13 inches. But this is perfect. And guys, you can set this right on your tree branches or on your wreath, and that will be beautiful, you know? And you can put it on a project, whether it's a teardrop or a wreath or whatever. But I love, love, love this velvet ribbon that we used. Now, we did eight loops. You can always do more if you wanted the bow to be thicker or fuller. I myself sometimes work with sparser bows because it gives you opportunity to add things in there, but you could um, do thicker if you wanted to. Also, I know it's coming. You don't have to do an odd number on the ribbon, okay? I did eight loops, and here's why. You've got all those tails. You can't even tell how many loops that you have because it looks fuller because you have all those tails that we made into there as well, okay? So keep that in mind. So Gina says... To you, I'll make a video with all the loops the same size, just like you're doing on the Pro Bow. She says, thanks for your support. Of she course. Of course. Love you more. So, y'all, you can find those videos. Go to YouTube.com and go to type in Pro Bow the Hand. Or you can go to ProBowTheHand.com. And um, I'm sure she's got all the videos on there. And she has a camera set up where it's, like, right above her board. And so it's going to be very easy to follow. And she's very – she slows down for everybody. So – you can kind of almost do it with her, you know. And what I would do is put that video right beside you and play and pause it as many times as you need to and do it with her once, and then you can move on from there. Okay, what are we doing? Okay, let me try to think about what, what the next video is. Okay. Um, okay. We're going to do one more bow. It's time to have some fun, okay? What I mean by fun... No, I don't have any margaritas. I wish. This is a brand new ribbon. This is velvet. I'm telling y'all, velvet's everywhere. But this is a black and white velvet. Now, look at this. Dina's looking at this, and I can already tell. She's thinking this could be used for Halloween. Mm -hmm. It could be. You could use this for Halloween, fall, spring, summer, or Christmas. And feel it. I love it. It's like got these velvet stripes on it, and the rest of it is satin. Yeah, you could use that too. So we're going to put this with this red ribbon, okay? Let me get me a drink real quick. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to alternate, okay? Start the same way. Let's do our um, red to begin with, six inch tail. So 
we have two loops, guys. Two loops and two tails. And then let's grab our scissors and trim that off. Okay? Now, let's come in with this black and white, which is fabulous. Come underneath it just like we did before. And let's put two loops, okay? One, on each side. Once you have that, cut your ribbon. Y'all, we're just alternating. Woo! <clears throat> okay, so now go back with your red. And if you use four inch ribbon, which I really like guys, it gives you a lot of coverage. Put that on the back of your bows because it's four inch. So, you know, it's bigger and you always want to if you do a stacked bow with multiple ribbons, put the sizes in order. Smallest on top, largest on bottom. But for this bow, I wanted two different sizes. So I'm alternating. And now we're going to put our last layer, which is in that red, pretty with that black and white. Mm -hmm. We're going to put the <clears throat> black and white on the back. Regina's asking about your open house. It is Saturday. It's just, uh, it's not my Christmas open house, Regina. It's just my opening for the season. I'll have a Christmas open house coming up in October. So I'll post about that when it gets closer. Okay. So look how pretty all those ribbons are. So now I'm going to take my wire put this through here and tie this all off together and then we're going to fluff out this bow with all the colors that we did. Okay, so same way. I find it easier if you grip it in the middle. You don't have to. Y'all, I'm going to have to buy me some of this black ribbon. Because I love the velvet that's in there. And remember, always use your wired ribbon. Guys, look, isn't that black and white so pretty? And again, you could even, if you had orange ribbon, mix it with that black and white. It's perfect for Halloween, you know? I love this, though. So, there's three different examples for y'all on bows, okay? From, this is a, just a layered bow with two ribbons. We have a stacked bow with three ribbons. And then we had our single bow which was a one and a half inch ribbon. It was just one, okay? So I recommend if you are a beginner, which hey, everybody's gotta start somewhere, start with something simple like this and do it over and over and over until you get to where you're comfortable and you like the outcome of your bow. Once you do that and once you like the outcome of your bow, then you can start advancing into other ones. But hey, if you think, if you're inspired and you want to try it, go for it. Because, you know, I always say, you never know what you're going to be able to do to you try it. And sometimes even when I design now, I don't know if it's going to turn out the way that I want until I try it. So just have fun um, and try it. And always use wired ribbon, okay? And when you're going to pick ribbon for a theme, if you, like I said, like if this was your theme right here, this Halloween wreath behind me, and you had these colored balls, look, orange, purple, black, green, any of those colors would work in a ribbon. You know, and if this was your theme, say you had a red and black Santa, then on your tree, find the colors that are in that Santa. Red, black, white, you know, whatever. If there's green in there, you can put green in there as well. So hopefully this helps you guys and inspires you. 
And if you want more about bow tying, go back on the Ellis videos. I'm on they're on their YouTube channel. I'm sure you can type in bow tying. Um, they're on their Facebook page. I have some on my page, Designs by Dylan. Um, there's bow tying videos everywhere, but I challenge you guys to go out there and tie a bow because once you get it down, it's so much easier. And you can put this little bow on your lamp post outside, and it's going to brighten everything up for the holidays, just like that. And it's not that expensive. Everything's on sale. So. Um, if you have been to an Ellis store lately, guys, make sure you come. They've got lots of um, fabulous things. All the Christmas is, uh, I'd say, like 100% set up. It looks pretty full out there. And, again, they got all kinds of vignettes and displays set up to inspire you um, to go home and do it in your home and to show you what you can do with certain products, whether it is florals, ribbon, or tabletop decor. So all of it is in there. They also have got mums coming in I saw outside. They had some pumpkins when I drove up on two wheels. They had um, hay. They had Crotons. They have all the fall stuff coming in. Um, and it's cooling down a little bit. And so, hey, what the heck? I say, let's decorate. Don't y'all? That needs to be a new t-shirt. What the heck? Let's decorate. I think so. I'm trying to think if there's any other movies I need y'all to watch. Or I don't think so. There's one at the theater. It's called The Invitation. I'm dying to see that. Deborah says, I'm you. Where, do you. where are you on Facebook? Hi, Deborah. Well, you can make sure you like this page, Ellis Home and Garden. But you can also find me on Facebook, guys at Designs by Dylan, and my name is spelled D-Y-L-A-N. And make sure you go follow me, because I've got lots of exciting things happening on there. Um, and, yeah, but make sure you follow Ellis. We're live every Tuesday here at Ellis, um, usually at 9 a.m., but today we did 10 a.m. I wanted to do it a little bit later for you guys, just so that I know some of you are working, or you're probably getting your kids back from school. And I wanted to make sure uh, the bow tying video was as most visible as it could be, because that way it could hopefully help you guys out. We all pray for me today as I go and uh, call the insurance company <laughs> and hopefully I'm about to get on the phone with them in just a second. Hopefully they can send me an insurance card so I can go to the doctor at 1.30. And um, I got shipping to do today. I've got things to get ready for this coming Saturday. I'm going to have a filming tomorrow of my store. On, tomorrow they're filming my store so you'll be able to see it on Saturday if you can't make it in person. And uh, yeah, so I hope you are having a great week, even though it's Tuesday and you had a great weekend. I hope your kids are enjoying their um, and settling into their new school schedules. Um, and we will be live back next Tuesday um, at Ellis Home and Garden. Guys, don't forget ellishomeandgarden.com. You can find these products. There's lots of ribbon, so you can create your own uh, blends of ribbon that you want. And make sure you share it. You know, hashtag Ellis Home and Garden on your photos so that we can go back and check them out and all the fabulous work that y'all do. All right. Love y'all for watching. Have a blessed day. Great week. And uh, we'll see you next time here at Ellis on the Card. Bye, y'all. Bye.